Lunch is an old white guy talking about work, isn't it? It's pretty dull. So I'm going to ask a couple of bit of. I, I'm luckily for you, I'm not even going to try and sing. So it's good. So first of all, um, how many people are actually in work at the moment? Can I raise your hands? Okay. Keep your hands up. How many of you think working five days a week is a good thing? <laughs> oh, shit. Uh, small group at the back there. Um, next question, I think, is do um, you think there's a better way of doing it? Okay. Now, I did a stupid thing with my company last week. I said, hey, I've got a really dumb idea. I'm going to pay you for five days, but you only have to work for four. <laughs> and you don't have to work longer hours on the four days either. But there's a deal here. And the deal is, I need you to give me the same productivity over four days as you can do over five. Sounds impossible, right? But it wasn't. Now, why is this important? Because you are the future of our terror. Well, let me tell you why. Because the alternative is not work. Hands up, everybody who thinks working a gig job is good. A gig job is um, a question box, a gig job. A gig job is something like working for Uber. It's like uh, working when supposedly you want to work rather than working for an employer. All right, so show of hands, everybody thinks it's a good idea. All right, okay, here's the thing. If you have a gig contract, you are ostensibly are working when you want. It's a bit of a long con. Because what we're really talking about is not actually you being able to work when you want. It's you making yourself available to work. The gig owner will decide whether you get that job or not. Now, why is this important? There's a study of young, I think 10,000 young French uh, people who are in gig jobs in Auckland universities have been studying them for about 10 years. If you get a gig job, it's very difficult to break that cycle and work in a conventional environment. Really difficult. Foundation for Young Australians, I know it was mentioned by Grant Robertson this morning. Same story, if you are working gig, it is very difficult to break out of that. Now why is that important? Because what we want is we want good jobs for our people. We want our people to be invested in. We want to be able to see them to grow and develop. But if you're in a gig job, I'm interested in you delivering that package. I don't care in whether I can develop you personally. If you're delivering that food, if you're writing that bit of code, I don't care. Now actually, what does that do? How does that make you feel? How do you grow? How do you develop? It? Now, in modern society, another bad statistic, one in five of our people at any point in time have a stress or a mental health issue. One in five. And most of those are caused by insecurity at work, not having enough money, not being able to see the future. Quite a statistic, yeah? So what I'm trying to campaign for is something totally different. It's to say that actually we need a world where employers share 
the prosperity of the fourth industrial revolution, not necessarily just in high wages, but in time. So that you could work four days a week, not five. And you have a day a week that you can invest in yourself. A day a week that you can reconnect with your family and your friends. A day a week where you could actually decide to retrain, to upskill. Because everybody talks about the threat of all the jobs you know, disappearing as a consequence of artificial intelligence. What if you had time to invest in yourself? Now, for me, this, is, this was a stupid idea that I came up with on a planet. But what we've discovered is that this is an issue which crosses borders and cultures. Now, I've just come back from driving a 1941 Chevrolet from Peking to Paris. And as I crossed the border into Russia, I got a phone call to say that the Prime Minister of Russia, Dmitry Medvedev, has just name-checked you and said that the four-day week is the future for Russia. And we got into this town and we had a couple of TV crews that were standing there to interview the time. Now, think about that. Russia are crying out loud. <laughs> the home of the, of the, you know, the five-year plan, the seven-day week, whatever the heck it was, I think they've only gone to a, a five-day week in almost in, a, in about the, the last 20 years, is saying that the future is for that. Now, this is really important. So when you get a politician, as you did this morning, standing in front of you and saying, we care about the future of work, call them out. Because I can blooming tell you what's happening. The legislation doesn't enable us to provide the thing that I want to provide. It's not hard. But the future for this country requires radical thought, and you are the future. So frankly, don't accept this crap from politicians. Ask them, what are they doing to change how we work, the way we work, that things are more important than just, you know, the simple constructs. We need to find a better way. Because if we don't find a better way, the price that we pay is the one in five of us with a stress or a mental health problem. And chucking $1.9 billion at mental health doesn't change a thing. It's the ambulance at the bottom of the cliff. This is your century. This is your chance. But don't accept the fact that you are not going to have the same chances, the same opportunities as the previous generations. You must be careful that you don't swallow the fact that the gig issue, working for somebody else without the protections of sick leave, holiday pay, minimum wage, that will happen if you're not careful. The way we stop, the way we build a better society is we allow our employers, our businesses, to come along with our people, our farming, and actually create a new culture, a new way of working. Aotearoa has led the world in votes for women. It should lead the way in a new way of working for the 21st century.